Okay, so let's start with the price. Uh, now, the reason I want to start here, this is one of the earliest and probably most important lessons that I picked up from a technical standpoint. So obviously, there's a lot of traders out there who, who don't look at any indicators. They actually just trade based off price. And uh, there's this concept that all information is baked into the price, right? If you're hearing about it in the headlines, uh, it's more than likely already being baked in for weeks or months in advance. Now, the reason why I want to start with the price is, it, uh, and I say this all the time, but as people, uh, we live our daily lives, we check the Bitcoin price, and that affects our emotions, right? You can check the price, you can wake up at 98K and say, oh man, what's going on? Like, is that it? Is it over? Is the bear market here? And it could be. But our emotions live on the daily chart. But as hodlers, it's and this is what the smart money do, this is what institutions do. They separate their emotions, which lives on the daily chart, from their decisions, which uses much, much bigger high time frame data. And you'll often see competent technical analysts. They'll look at things on a higher time frame, monthly or weekly. They'll set their bias, and then they'll get down into the weeds of the daily. And, the, and once they've got the view, I am bullish macro, but I think in the short term it's bearish, then they can get down into the execution mode, which is daily, hourly, whatever else. Now, for our purposes, um, our emotional state, for anyone who's familiar with technical analysis, we now have a lower high. So this high was lower than this. I'm not going to spend too long on this because, uh, as you know, TA is not my my primary thing. But um, we've got a low that we put in here in June and we've just taken out that low. So technically speaking, we now have a daily downtrend because we've got a, a lower high and a lower low combination. So really, the first thing we should take away is that we are now in a daily downtrend. We should actually assume that we're going to trade lower on the daily basis. But let's zoom out. Let's not uh, get too caught up in a pretzel there. Because on the weekly basis, I mean, this thing to me just looks like a macro uptrend, right? This looks like a bull flag. So that daily downtrend is a miniature bear market that lives inside this weekly high pullback. So this is literally one move on the weekly basis. And we're getting a miniature daily bear market inside a weekly bull market, which itself is inside a monthly scale bull market. So you got to kind of keep all these things in check. Now, could we reverse here? And this is the other lesson I learned a long time ago. Uh, whilst you've got the macro, and I think George, you had a um, in the comments on, on Thursday's post, think of the monthly chart. It's an aircraft carrier. If I don't um, get my numbers wrong, I think you were saying it took five nautical miles for a ship, for one of those aircraft carriers to, once the order of stop goes in, it takes five nautical miles for it to actually stop and start turning around. It's a, it's a big thing. It's got a lot of inertia and it wants to keep moving. Now, that order of someone saying stop, that is the one minute chart. At some point, this bull market will end and it will end on the one second chart. And then that will propagate to the one minute chart, which will propagate to the hourly chart, to the daily, to the weekly. So there's this like inversion process where the smallest time frame starts the reversal, but the macro time frame is where it wants to go until proven otherwise. So it takes a lot of work to prove otherwise on the macro scale, but by the time you've reversed, so let's say this is in fact the bull market peak, it's going to take weeks and months of chopping around and selling off and until it finally reverses all of these timeframes. And really, we've got to break pretty low before we actually reverse this thing. So keep all of that in mind. But if I just zoom out, my macro thesis is bullish. I mean, again, if I just stick this on a monthly chart, I mean, it looks like a ripping up trend to me. Um, I actually find if you ever want to just uh, from a technical standpoint, if you want to just separate the candlesticks and all the rest of it, candlesticks can be useful. But just look at the monthly chart or a weekly chart on uh, on the line chart. In my view, it just really I mean, this is just a bull flag in, as far as I'm concerned. So it takes out a lot of the noise because you're not looking at the, the bar shapes and all the rest of it whilst there's information in there. Sometimes I find just like, let's look at this thing on a line chart. And actually the other tool you can use, and which uh, the more time you spend floating around charts, the more this, uh, you know, does this look like a bullish chart? Flip it upside down, do an inversion. Does this look like a, uh, an asset that is appreciating or depreciating in value? This looks like it's a shit coin that's falling to zero, which flipped around means that Bitcoin's going uh, up again. Okay, so let's start the uh, the analysis, right? So now we've got a bit of a perspective, like let's not get caught up on the daily. Yes, we have a daily downtrend, but it's within the context of a much bigger animal. It's going to take a lot longer um, to get fully bearish. So therefore, like first and foremost, I don't see too much reason yet. Um, and this is what I think this 
session is going to be about. I want to just build up all these stories, say, should I change my bias? And if not, and if so, what are those threshold levels? Okay, so if we uh, if we look at the derivative side, because we know there's a lot more leverage in the system, um, just uh, it's a bit of a, let's call it an art form here, but I'm just noticing we're getting these spiky behavior going on in the liquidation profile. It used to kind of be a bit more of a wave form. I know that's not the right way to describe it, but I'm sure you know what I mean. These are more event-based things. And notice that they're all on the long side. So we had a pretty decent long squeeze and it seems to be lined up with all these sell-offs. So a lot of people are just trying to catch the falling knife. And given we're in a daily downtrend now, I suspect there'll be more of these. And at some point, at some point, all of these folks are going to go, all right, fine. The top is finally in and they're going to go max short. And then we're going to blow them all away. That's my base case, right? We may not, but that's my base case. These folks are going to get frustrated trying to sh long the bottom, long the bottom, liquidated, liquidated. All right, fine. Let's go max short. And then you get a really nice short squeeze that will um, uh, blow them all out. So um, TBC, but it kind of tells me maybe we've got a bit more time just kind of chop around and find that level. Um, but clearly there's been a, you know, longs are the, the main area here of what's uh, driving price lower. Now, another thing to note, and for folks who, like me, lived through the 2021 cycle, you will remember that mid-2021 sell-off. Let me actually just see if I can pull this thing back just so we can, uh, sorry, let me get rid of liquidations completely. Um, I'm talking about this sell-off here, right? And actually, you can see the liquidations. I mean, this is how stupid it is. Look how high these candles are, right? I can't get rid of them. But this mid 21 sell-off, this was a full-scale deleveraging. It was like a 50% down in like two weeks. Really, really nasty. This was a massive deleveraging. Now, when I say deleveraging, it means there's a total amount of open interest and the sell-off was so bad that one guy's stop loss becomes another guy's liquidation, becomes another guy's stop loss, and it just cascades. And suddenly everyone is wiped out, just purges the system. There was nobody with a stop loss down to like 20K that survived that, just completely wiped out. Now, this oscillator is basically looking at how much open interest has increased or decreased. And it's just got some simple statistical bands, right? One standard, two standard deviations on the upside and the downside. Um, I've color coded the chart here. So you can see when we get these blue dots, these blue bubbles, um, we saw a couple of these in July, well, this time last year, July, August last year. Um, we had one on that first, first sell-off when Trump tariff and um, all this stuff was blowing up in February. These are periods where the open interest really got flushed out. And that's usually a good sign because you've cleared out all those stops. You've kind of purged all the deleveraging risk out of the system. It will build back up again, but you've done a pretty good, it's a bit of a fire sale. Everyone's just been cleared out and uh, there's not as much dead wood. Now, we didn't even get to the one standard deviation level, right? We had a 7% decline in OI, not insignificant, but also not really a deleveraging. So, and we'll get actually, let's just move across to it. So we've got a liquidation profile that just looks like Long's kind of trying to catch the falling knife. Uh, this is the liquidation heat map that we looked at on Thursday. Um, bring it back in. So this is by Coinglass. Um, and we can see here that, yes, there's some liquidation volumes down here. And just for uh, explain what's going on here, the denser the green, the more people have a, a levered long position that if the price goes there, they're going to get cleared out. So it's basically a, a heat map looking for where are those pockets of liquidity. Now, we can see there's a much, much denser pocket up here above uh, above the all-time high, about 110K, 112K, something like that. Maybe let's go back on a year because I want to just pick up um, the back end of 2024. You can see that we had a lot more short interest. This is really what we talked about on Thursday. Yes, there's some positions below us. You know, we've got some folks. I wouldn't really want to see the price go down here to like 92K, 92 to 90. There's a decent pocket there, but the juiciest pocket is actually above the price. Now, the reason I want to highlight this, intraday on like a, you know, over the course of a correction consolidation period, a lot of people get caught up. And this is, again, go on Twitter and you'll see people talking about manipulation of this and that. It's a combination of boredom, but people just not understanding how markets work. Markets go and find pockets of liquidity. Like the institutions and, and professional traders, they know the market's not really going anywhere anytime soon, right? It may not be now, but you know, at the start of a correction, they're like, okay, we'll probably put in a meaningful top. Like for gold, gold hit that may a multiple level. We covered that a couple, maybe probably a month or two ago. It hit that just unbelievable height on the 200 day and 200 week. Like the may a multiple was out of the roof. 
it doesn't take a genius to go, gold's probably not going to 5K anytime soon. Professional traders know this. And once they've established that we're probably not going anywhere anytime soon, and especially once a range gets established, like a chop solidation range or something where it's just chopping around, they'll go and hunt liquidity. They'll say, all right, I'm not too fussed about this market trending. There's a bunch of people who are going to get liquidated. If I get the price down there, I can scoop up all of those coins, right? And they can essentially put on bigger positions by creating forced sellers. And the amateur investor doesn't, he's not able to distinguish that this is just a choppy period of nothingness. And you kind of got to just let the nothingness do its thing. So many people get caught up on that daily time frame. Why isn't the Bitcoin price higher? And they don't realize that, yes, some people call it market manipulation. It's just how markets work. There's people who are going to get chopped around. So this is really just the market looking for those pockets of liquidity. You know, I don't see too much gravity pulling it in any direction. If we get down to 90 to 92, yeah, you might get a bit of a squeeze there, but look at the density above us. Like to me, the market wants to go and find Max Payne and Max Payne feels like squeezing a lot of these guys out. It may not be tomorrow, but at the moment, that's what I think is going on. And everything we've seen on the derivatives front so far, it's just the market kind of chopping around within the established downtrend, looking for liquidity to then go long to squeeze out all those folks above. That's my base case, right?